Good morning and welcome to St. Luke Lutheran Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Pastor Noah Heron, and we are thrilled to have you with us here on this second Sunday after Pentecost. Right here at St. Luke, we always like to offer a word of welcome at the beginning of our service, so please receive this welcome from us. In response to the call in Romans 15, 7, to welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you, we warmly welcome people of any race, nationality, sexual orientation, gender identity, age, and ability. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. All-powerful God, all God, in Jesus Christ you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And please prepare your hearts and minds for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for they were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your brother and brother and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and brothers? And those looking around and looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my brother and my mothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and sibling and mother and parent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So on June 16th, 1858, Abraham Lincoln addressed the president and the gentlemen of the National Convention in a bid for a, for a presidential nomination. Um, and here are the words that he spoke. You may recognize this as the House Divided Speech. Mr. President and gentlemen of the convention, if we could first know where we are and whither we are tending, we could then better judge what to do and how to do it. We are now far into the fifth year since a policy was initiated with the avowed object and confident promise of putting an end to slavery and agitation. Under the operation of that policy, that Slavery and agitation has not only not ceased, but has constantly augmented. In my opinion, it will not cease until a crisis shall have been reached and passed. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. So these words of Abraham Lincoln, which are, were at the time very risky, even his close friends and supporters said that he had taken it too far um, in, his, in his strong statement against slavery. 
and um, he lost that Senate race, that presidential bid nomination, uh, because of this speech. But he stood beside he stood beside it. And many years, six or seven years later, as some of his friends and colleagues were reflecting, they didn't think that it was the right thing to do at the time, but they did respect his integrity. And they said that him standing beside that speech and having that integrity is what ultimately won him the presidency, even if it seemed very risky and unpopular at the time. So I point this out to say that house divisions, empire divisions, kingdom divisions are nothing new. Uh, You know, some of the things that we're struggling with uh, you know, racial division in June 16 of 1858, we're still struggling with today in June of 2021. And our, our prayers today will remind us that today is the anniversary of D-Day, June 6, 1944. Um, you know, that was a that was a marker day in World War II. Wars, divisions, strife, conflict, they are as old as time. And in fact, our Genesis text today reminds us of that original division, that original brokenness. And, you know, some of us will recall the story of Eve and the serpent as kind of the original sin story or the original fall story. But one of the things that we know now through discoveries of ancient text is that in the ancient Near East, in Babylon and Sumeria and Egypt and Canaan, There are all sorts of stories like this, like the ones that we read in Genesis, that try to explain the beginnings of the world. And particularly to to help people understand or to make sense of why we are born into a broken world as broken people. And I'd also like to say that... um, Maybe one day we can talk about in a sermon about the issues with Eve, the woman, taking all of the blame for everything that's wrong with the world. But that's a sermon for another day. But yeah, we go back to this sense of there is, um, we know that something's not right in this world. When we come into this world in our bodies, we can feel that something's not right because there are always these divisions and always these differences to overcome and always these conflicts. Something within us knows, though, that these different opinions, these different worldviews, and these different preferences make life more interesting. They say that variety is the spice of life, right? One of the things that we have here in the South is uh, these these license plates or flags that say house divided and uh in alabama we had one that would say alabama and auburn you know and um it's interesting because people know uh, to me that's a signal people know that there's going to be internal conflicts but there's something stronger that holds us together there's something more important than our allegiance to a football team and even Jesus' house was divided in the text, in the gospel text for today. His family thought he was out of his mind and was trying to restrain him. The religious leaders in his life thought he was theologically way out of line, even to the point where they were saying that he had a demon in the spirit of Satan. Jesus took a major risk by being true to who he was and doing what he was called to do. Since it's Pride Month, you can ask any one of your LGBTQIA plus friends about what it looks like and what it feels like to take that kind of risk with family and religious authorities. Because if they're standing here today, they will have a story about that. And really, all of us have those kinds of stories because it is not easy to be the person that God has called us to be in this broken world. I just want to address one thing before we continue. There are some uh, there are some pretty risky and controversial things that Jesus says in this text today. And one of those things that I remember growing up was this concept of the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit being the unforgivable sin. And I remember it being if you if you said a certain curse word, then you know you were damned to forever. 
uh, eternal damnation and hell, and, you know, you couldn't overcome it. But with the text, and there are lots of different interpretations I've heard through the years um, uh, from different denominations and different perspectives, but what's really happening in the context here is that Jesus is calling out the religious leaders because they are saying that he has the spirit of, the, of Satan within him. And he's trying to explain to them that he has the Holy Spirit within him. And so when they call that Holy Spirit with him, within him evil, they are blaspheming against God Almighty because they are calling what God has made good evil. And the thing that we can remember is that we are charged to see the divinity in every single human and in all of God's creation. What God has created is good. And we are here to hold that space and to hold that hope and to see the very best and not automatically label something as evil just because it's confusing or just because we don't understand it or just because it's risky. So to continue, the only way to overcome our divisions is to lean in, just like Jesus did when he took the risk of healing on the Sabbath against everyone's better judgment because he knew someone was hurting and needed healing. Jesus recognized and affirmed the holiness and the divinity of God in every single person that he encountered. Jesus welcomed and included those who lived out their faith and re redefined what family looks like. Jesus trusted in the power of the Holy Spirit to move him and us past all of these self-imposed barriers, these constructs that feel very important and like they uphold our world, but they really keep us apart. Audre Lorde, the self-described black lesbian mother warrior and poet, her words, said, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. People of God, as we are sent out into the world today, let us recognize, accept, and celebrate the differences of one another so that we can overcome divisions. As we strive to live as a unified body of Christ, Amen. We'll take a moment of silence to reflect on the word as we enter into the prayers of the people. Let us come before God in prayer, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. We cry to you, O Lord. O God, on this Sunday, we ask you to sustain believers around the world. Give wisdom to pastors, musicians, and church committees as they make plans for their summer worship. For the church, we pray. We cry to you, O Lord. On this National Animal Rights Day, we ask you to safeguard animals, both wild and tame. Give them the habitat they need and rescue all animals from abuse. For these and all of creation, we pray. We cry to you, O Lord. On this anniversary of D-Day, we ask you to bring an end to warfare throughout the world. Halt the violence between nations, on our streets, and inside our homes. Heal the wounds of prejudice and embolden all who strive for peace. For the nations we pray, we cry to you, O Lord. During this month of many weddings, we ask you to bless all marriages, 
Nourish the fidelity of partners for one another and be yourself a companion to those who live alone. For home life we pray. We cry to you, O Lord. On this National Cancer Survivors Day, we ask you to strengthen both those who are recovering from disease and those who now face death. Bring healing to humanity as it struggles against the coronavirus. For recovery from an illness, we pray. We cry to you, O Lord. Always, we ask you to comfort all who suffer and to heal the sick. Provide care for all persons afflicted with mental illness and sustain their families. Visit those whose pain is hidden from us, those on our prayer list, and those we now name here before you. For the sick we pray, we cry to you, O Lord. Once again, we ask that you empower each of us, that we never lose heart, and that you receive our silent prayers. For ourselves we pray, we cry to you, O Lord. We remember with gratitude those who have lived and died in the faith, especially those we name here before you, and we ask you to welcome us with them into your eternal life. For life evermore, we cry to you, O Lord. Into your hands, mighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, with a church around the world and the communion of saints, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Um, please say hello and peace in the comments. Um, glad to have you here with us today. Uh, just a few brief announcements while we're doing that. So we had our closeout of our uh, final Bible study this past Wednesday. So we will be taking off June and July, but if you'd like to join us for Bible study um, beginning in the first Wednesday of August, that will be ready and happening. Um, our partner Viral Solutions in the parking lot is offering COVID testing for ages 12 and up. So please, you can come even without an appointment and get a vaccination and they're still doing testing as well. Uh, so we're thankful for that. Um, the new worship time for our Facebook live service is 12 p.m. Uh, on Sunday. So it will be treated as a second service and I will uh, be here live with you. So, so glad for those of you who are joining us. Um, we will not have a virtual coffee hour uh, until further notice. Um, we're starting, you know, I've, I've said this before, but we're trying to figure out how to how to do this hybrid version of uh, parking lot church and online church. We need, uh, if you're considering coming in person, we need ushers and altar guild workers for our in-person services. So if you are interested in that, please contact me and I will be happy to get you trained and ready to go. Um, we want to thank Paul Blackney and Melissa Faulkner for being our Senate Assembly reps. We had a great Senate Assembly yesterday and um, they did a great job of, of sitting through seven hours on Zoom and I'm uh, very grateful for them for putting in their votes and their faithful witness as our representatives to the Senate Assembly yesterday. Um, June is Pride Month, and we will be uh, celebrating that in different ways. The Senate has will be sharing things on their Facebook and social media pages, and we will be sharing those as well at St. Luke. So say happy Pride to someone you love. All right. Now please receive this blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. 
The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.